yeah, yeah, yeah. What's up, people? It's your boy Davion. Welcome to my channel, and we're going to talk about Little Richard and his interview recently about not being gay no more. Stay tuned. I'm just going to read uh, a snippet from an article so that we can get a full body story on what's going on here. It says, apparently, Little Richard came out as gay a while ago. Little Richard says he is no longer gay. The 84-year-old rock and roll pioneer recently gave a rare interview to Christian-oriented program and Three Angels Broadcasting Network. Good God, what a mouthful. Simultaneously touching on his faith and rebuting homosexuality as unnatural. He says, when I first came out in show business, they wanted you to look like everybody but yourself, Richard said. And anybody that comes in show business, they gonna say you either gay or straight. Little Richard Father says that God made men men and made women women. The Tutti Fruity singer c continued, you've got to live the way God wants you to live. He can save you. Reportedly, Little Richard told Penthouse Magazine he was gay way back in 1995. So Little Richard did acknowledge in 1995 that he was actually gay and attracted to men. He continued his interview and said, so much unnatural affection, so much of people just doing everything and don't think about God, don't want no parts of him. More recently, in a 2012 GQ interview, Richard candidly discussed partaking in orgies with both men and women, while also describing himself as omnisexual. In his words, we are all both male and female. Sex to me is like a mortgage board. Whatever I feel like, I go for. Lately, seeing Little Richard without the perm or lace front makeup and eyeliner has us all confused as hell. So, Little Richard apparently did come out as gay in 1995. Then, later on in 2012, he described himself as omnisexual or, in other words, a pansexual, which is somebody who's just attracted to whatever. It can be a man, it could be a woman, whoever you have chemistry with, if you find this person attractive, you're not hung up on their gender, you're just hung up on the fact that you are attracted to the persons. And he participated in the orgies with both men and women, etc., and did what the fuck he wanted to do. Now in 2017, he's on a Christian broadcasting station, giving, uh, once again, another recount of his life and saying that he is no longer gay. Answer the big old question, do I believe that people can change their sexuality? Yes and no. And I'm going to explain it this way. Sexuality is a spectrum. You have two extreme ends of the spectrum. You have heterosexuality on the extreme end left. And you have homosexuality on the extreme right. In between this space, in between both of these extremes is a bridge, is a line. And on that line is a variation of sexual attractions and degrees of sexual attraction. So you get all the bisexual people who fall in between the space of homosexuality and heterosexuality. Now in between the space, you can have bisexual people who are equally attracted to both men and women. They equally attracted. They just naturally find both male and female sexy, attractive, etc. But then you have people who fall within variations of, of bisexuality. And you hear women talk about their sporadic bisexual experiences in their life. Maybe they're experimented around in college. Maybe they're experimented in high school. Or maybe here and there they hook up with a woman to a certain degree. Now they may not want to marry a woman. They may not even want to engage in full sexual contact with the woman. But they may suck a titty or two. They may, you know, tongue kiss, make out in the club under some weird circumstances. You know, women really show us just how much of a spectrum sexuality it is because women's sexuality is so much ambiguous and so vague and this sexuality also plays out for men but because we live in a patriarch men are not comfortable always talking about their own experimentation with sexuality and their own personal and real attractions toward the same sex because that's something that's very ridiculed especially within the black community where we have very strong views of masculinity and very strong views of manhood so you won't hear black men saying they've experimented even if they have and you won't see heterosexual black men saying yeah i fucked a dude a time or two in my life 
because you won't just hear that. But it doesn't mean it doesn't happen and it doesn't mean that it's not the reality. So you have variations of, 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 of bisexuality. When it comes to religion, there's, there are people who believe that God can change you. And you might have been gay your whole life and gave your life to Christ. And now apparently you're heterosexual and you have a wife or a husband. And you have kids and, you know, you no longer thirst or hunger or have an appetite or a propensity toward anybody of the same sex. Fine. Now, what we don't know as people uh, is what is really happening when people claim that they've been changed. Because people like Little Richard, ironically, have been married before and divorced and also has kids. So this is a man who has admitted to being bisexual, who's admitted to having experiences with the opposite sex, having a natural attraction to women, uh, being able to have sex and engage in sexual intercourse with women. And he would be the perfect candidate for people who can change because he already has a capacity within him for affections for women. By him giving his life to God, this solidifies his motivation to only exclusively entertain his attraction to women rather than his attraction to men. Now, in the case of homosexuals who've been homosexual all their life, they've never had intercourse with a woman, they've never had interest in a woman, they've been this way for 20, 30, 40 years, and all of a sudden they want to fall into being with a woman because they've given their life to Christ. Once again, just because they've predominantly focused their sexuality on men doesn't mean that that same gay person who's never had an experience with a woman up until giving their life to Christ does not have a bisexual capacity. And for me, my personal understanding and belief is that if you have a capacity for bisexuality within you, even if you've never tapped into your bisexuality, even if you've never focused your, your, your sexual or romantic attraction toward the same sex or the opposite sex, even if you've never played around with it, does not negate the fact that you have a bisexual capacity. And once again, everybody has different and various degrees of bisexuality. But I feel like when it comes to spirituality and it comes to God and it comes to sexuality, if a person is in distress about their sexual orientation, a.k.a. the homosexual, he's under conviction what he's doing is wrong, it's unnatural, it's perverse, it's ungodly, he's going to go to hell. He, he humbly and honestly goes to God. He or she about his sexuality. What I believe happens is that God searches out the capacity, the bisexual capacity within that homosexual male or female and expands that capacity, widen that capacity so that this person can transition from their sexuality to another sexual orientation. Now, does God do this because there's anything actually wrong with homosexuality? Some of us will beg to differ. See, I personally don't believe that God gives a fuck about who the fuck people are in love with because love is love and God smiles upon love, period, because God is love. So God can't have an issue with love. Now, God can have an issue with your horrorism, if you want to believe that. God can have an issue with you having a reckless ass sex life. It is what it is. But what I don't believe God does is, is frown upon anybody who is expressing love in any capacity. Because the same Bible that says to stone homosexuals also says that any man who shows love knows God. And the Bible didn't say that man has to be Christian. The Bible didn't say that man has to be heterosexual. The Bible did not give any specifics about the, the man who simply shows love knows God. And you know why? The man, any man, anywhere, living any lifestyle who happens to be showing love, you know why he knows God? Because love is God. And love is never without God because they're the same thing. God is not an expression of love. God is not a creation of love. God is love itself. So the fact that I am a same gender loving man and love my partner. Now, I'm not just fucking my partner. I'm not just, just having casual sexual experiences with my partner. I'm in a loving covenant and a loving union with my man as a man.
means that I know God because I express love. And this verse isn't just talking about romantic love. It's talking about all love. If you love your friends, if you love your family, if you love your career, if you have purpose in your life and you love what you do, just love, love. Anytime you feel love, anytime you are expressing and experiencing, projecting, receiving, giving, teaching, speaking, hearing, living love, you know God because God is love and love is God. And that comes out of the same Bible that condemns homosexual sexual practices. And ironically, the Bible doesn't condemn same gender loving relationships. The Bible always just condemns the sexual practice of it. Very interesting. Oh, and it never condemns lesbians. It only condemns homosexual men. So we have a lot of understanding to do about the Bible. And we have further investigation to do on the Bible and its real view on homosexuality. And until further review, we're just going to sit the Bible aside. Let's get back to Little Richard. So this is a man who already has a natural affection for women. He's bisexual. Now because he's Christian, he has chosen to just express his heterosexual side and to stand there. Now let's also continue to put Little Richard in perspective. Little Richard is 80 odd years old. He's given the last hoorah to his life. He's at the last leg of it. He knows that he has more time behind him than he does ahead of him. And he's also a Christian, which means that he's a man who has religious convictions about things. Most of us would be doing, whether we're straight or gay, would be doing what Little Richard is this far along in his life. He's, once you become old, you've lived your life, you've had your fun, there isn't anything else to do but then start thinking about your soul and eternity and what that really means. And take advantage of the little bit of time you have left now to clean all your shit up to make sure that your ticket to heaven is no longer on railway, but that it is officially purchased. So I'm not shocked that little Richard is no longer gay at 80 years old. Because when he was 40, 50, 30, and 20, he was fucking everything and everybody like it wasn't nobody's business. So age has helped little Richard to put into perspective his life. And because religion is a part of most people's worldview, it's the foundation that's laid in most people that helps to guide them along their life and help them to make particular decisions as it relates to their religious perspective. Little Richard is at that point in time in his life. Should we be condemning Little Richard's transition from gay or bisexual to straight? No. I try to stay out of that kind of shit. When gay people want to say they've changed and converted, I'm neutral. I'm like, Whatever. But when straight people like to say, see, here it is, here it is. Here it is. Here, here, here's an example. God did it for little Richard. God can do it for you all. I can't deal with that from straight people. Straight people will never have the privilege of being able to speak about a sexual orientation, a sexual perspective that they don't have themselves. If you are heterosexual, what that simply means is that you can't tell me shit about what it means to be gay what it means to be bisexual, what it means to be anything else other than heterosexual. That's the only fucking experience you can talk about in terms of me. Nothing that you say about sexuality will make a motherfucking difference to me. And honestly, any other gay person who is converting to something else, it doesn't bother me. It doesn't move me. It doesn't make me challenge my own reality and sit back and think, well, damn, little Richard changed. Maybe can I? Well, I can't because I personally don't believe that God gives a fuck about whether I'm with a man or a woman. As long as I honor who I'm with and I love who I'm with and I'm living out of my highest self, that's it for me and God. That is it. That is the highest calling on each person's life as far as I'm concerned is removing your ego out of life and living from out of that pure loving place. Living from out of that Christness. Living from out of that Christ consciousness. That is the reality. So if Little Richard is happy with his choice and his transition from gay to straight and he's in a great place with God and he has peace in his heart and peace in his and peace in his mind. Wonderful. Um, I can't get with little Richard condemning it for everybody else just because this is no longer you because when it was you, you didn't have no problem and you, and you didn't have no, no problem with other people who were omnisexual or pansexual. 
But now that you've made a choice for your life, all of a sudden, it's okay to look back at people who didn't make that choice with you and say that they are living unnatural affections and that you have to do what God wants you to do and you have to move away from your sexuality. Like, no. Just because I make a personal choice for me does not give me the right to judge anybody else who is living whatever. If right now I choose to give up eating meat and become a vegan, I don't get to condemn meat eaters. It's not for me to condemn. My only job in life is to move where I'm supposed to move and to be who I feel called to be. Who other people want to be and what other people still doing is between them and themselves. It has nothing to do with me. So that's the only thing I that made me cringe about the interview is that he had the audacity to take a choice he made and condemn other people who have not arrived at that place and who are not going to arrive at that place because everybody is not called to be heterosexual. That's just the God-given fucking truth. And that's why there are church sissies and church queens who've been in church all their fucking life who cannot get rid of the gay. They can't pray the gay away enough. They can't have enough hands laid on them. They can't not try to think about their attraction to the same sex enough. They're still gay. They still are utterly attracted in both sexually and romantically to the same sex. And God is seemingly not moving on their behalf. We're all not called to the same thing. God doesn't have an issue with sexuality, which is why some people don't change because they have basically no damn capacity to even be bisexual. Like for me, I'm in no way, shape, or form romantically or sexually attracted to women. I find women beautiful. You know, I think that the way they carry themselves is beautiful. I see images and see the women in my life, the women who I have as friends, the women in my family. I think they're gorgeous. Do I want to be in love with a woman? Is that my natural affection? No, it's not. Is that a heterosexual man's natural affection? Yes. He's naturally attracted to the way a woman looks, to a woman's form, to femininity. I'm not attracted to women. It is what it is. I mean, shoot me. Am I going to go to hell because I don't like mashed potatoes and you do? Am I going to go to hell because I like apples and you like oranges? Am I going Am I going to go to hell because I like tattoos and you don't? Am, I mean, like, it makes God this small when we do that with God. So, Little Richard, happy for you, my brother. Stay in God. Stay happy. Um, Continue to spread God's love. But... You might want to slow down on being judgmental and critical about a people whose shoes you have walked in because you've lived that life and you've been present in that sexual orientation. And it's not cute and it's not intelligent and it's not spiritual nor loving to condemn these people for loving who they love. People don't ask to be attracted to who they're attracted to. Heterosexuals didn't make a choice to be attracted to the, to, to the opposite sex. And homosexuals did not make a choice to be attracted to the same sex. These things were already pre-programmed within us. We are who the fuck we are. And if we want to make another choice, we can. We have the free will to fucking do that. And if we want to make peace and be who we are, we got free will to do that too. Everything is personal for each person. And every man must work out his own salvation for his or her own self. So nobody can change just because a book says it. And nobody can change just because somebody else has changed. People change according to the way that God is pulling on their heart. And what direction God is pulling them in as he pulls on their heart. And God is not pulling me in the direction that he's pulling Little Richard. And he's not putting, and he's not pulling a Little Richard in the direction that he's pulling Obama. And he's not pulling Obama in the same direction that he's pulling Shaquisha. And he's not pulling Shaquisha in the same direction that he's pulling Antoine. God is doing something very different in all of our lives. He gave all of us purpose, all of us personality. He made all of us unique. And we're all meant to have a unique experience. But I do believe we're all meant to operate and walk in love, period. No matter who you are, what culture, creed, religion, and persons, and what you identify with, your philosophy and your mentality should be rooted in love. In love. So, good luck, Little Richard. Slow down on judging gay people. But good luck and God bless you on your journey. I'm personally happy for you. Now, fuck you and bye.